Next on PIJN News, Dr. Chaps reports on these important issues. Israel and America are both exiting UNESCO. Quebec passes a religious neutrality law to require citizens to uncover their faces, and Kurds want Iraq's Christians to fight for independence. Former Navy Chaplain Gordon James Klingenschmidt took a stand to defend religious freedom by daring to pray publicly in Jesus' name. Now he helps you by reporting the news, discerning the spirits, and praying the scriptures. Would you pray with us? Here's Dr. Chaps. God bless you in Jesus' name. My name is Chaplain Gordon James Klingenschmidt, Dr. Chaps, and you're watching PIJN News. On this show, we like to do three things. We report the news, we discern the spirits, and we pray the scriptures in Jesus' name. Are you ready to pray the news with us? Here's our first story. Israel is now joining and following suit after the United Nations has pulled out of a key, U excuse me, the United States has pulled out of a key United Nations agency called UNESCO. Israel National News reports that Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu announced last Thursday that Israel will be exiting the so-called United Nations Educational, Scientific, and Cultural Organization, otherwise known as UNESCO, because that organization has blatant anti-Israel bias. And this follows a similar announcement made by the Trump administration in the preceding week. This UN agency, UNESCO, has a board and they are set to meet next week and they are going to respond to the allegations that they have become anti-Israel by passing resolutions that they had intended to bring to a vote and would be postponed for possibly six months to decide if they are actually anti-Israel. This is seen by sources as a possible attempt to stave off the actions by the United States and Israel. They don't want us to go, but if they are truly anti-Semitic and they hate Jews, then we cannot stand with them and Israel certainly cannot stand with them. Prime Minister Netanyahu's statement came just hours after the US State Department declared that the US is also leaving UNESCO by December of 2019 due to its anti-Israel bias. The leading contender for the post of the head of UNESCO is a Qatari delegate but the Simon Wiesenthal Center protested that choice, writing that the candidate, whose name is Hamad bin Abuzaziz al Kawari, sounds like a good Muslim name, has repeatedly endorsed anti Jewish works and denied any connection between the Jewish people and the sacred city of Jerusalem. Earlier this year, UNESCO declared the ancient city of Hebron as King David's first capital and home to the tomb of the biblical patriarchs, uh, an endangered Palestinian heritage site. Now, last year, UNESCO passed resolutions declaring that Israel has no rights to Jerusalem. And they falsely described the Temple Mount in the old city of Jerusalem as exclusively Muslim sites. We all know that's not true. But the Prime Minister's office revealed that Prime Minister Netanyahu had already called upon his country's diplomats to prepare for Israel's departure from UNESCO. And a statement by Prime Minister Netanyahu's office read the following, quote, the Prime Minister instructed the Foreign Ministry to prepare Israel's withdrawal from the organization, UNESCO, alongside the United States. I welcome the decision by President Trump to withdraw from UNESCO. It is a courageous and moral decision because UNESCO has become the theater of the absurd and because instead of preserving history, it distorts it." End quote. Israel's ambassador to the UN, Danny Dannon, praised the Trump administration's decision to pull the US out of the UN organization, responsible for a series of highly anti-Israeli resolutions in recent years. He said, quote, UNESCO has become a battlefield for Israel bashing and has disregarded its true role and purpose. Today's decision is a turning point for UNESCO, 
the organization's absurd and shameful resolutions against Israel have consequences. Today is a new day at the UN where there is a price to pay for discrimination against Israel. The United States stands by Israel and is a true leader for change at the UN. The alliance between our two countries is stronger than ever." End quote. And that's the news. Our thanks to INN, which is Israeli national news for that report. And let's take a moment and discern the spirits. In this story, we have various countries, various agencies and various leaders who are joined together, not just at the United Nations, which is supposed to talk about peace, but at this little cultural arm of the UN, UNESCO, where their job is to preserve history, right? They're a cultural organization. The problem is so many Muslim nations have taken seats on the board of UNESCO that they're passing anti-Jewish revisionist history to say that Jerusalem is not part of Israel, that King David is not Jewish. I mean, think about this. If King David is not Jewish, who is? <laughs> I mean, it's the star of David on the Israeli flag. <laughs> so clearly UNESCO is out to lunch and they are trying to invade or, or claim territory that is not theirs. And that is anti, not just anti-Jewish, it's anti-God. The God that David worshiped, the God that Abraham worshiped, gave that promise eternally, which as a Christian, I believe has fulfilled all the promises of God are yes and amen in Jesus Christ, fulfilled to the church, but Jerusalem clearly belongs to the nation of Israel. And the fact that 700 years after Christ, this heretic came along, Muhammad, who never visited Jerusalem, he just had a dream about going there one day. Somehow that gives the Muslim people a right to claim that territory. Thank God we discern the spirit of God on Prime Minister Netanyahu and even Donald Trump, our president, for this decision where they are standing with the Jewish people and honoring Israel. The Bible says this in Joel chapter three and verse two, and this is God's promise to Joel. He's going to gather all the nations and he's going to bring them down to the Valley of Jehoshaphat. In other words, against the Jewish people, but there God is going to enter into judgment against the people of the world on account of his favorite people, my heritage Israel, says God. He's gonna stand with Israel against all the nations. Why? Because they have scattered Israel among the nations and they've also divided up God's land. Let's pray about this, would you pray with me? Father in heaven, we do pray in Jesus' name for your continued vindication of your chosen people, that you are fulfilling the promises you gave to Abraham and through David and through Jesus Christ. And Father, we pray that you will bless the people of Israel and that you will separate the wheat from the chaff as regards to who really owns Jerusalem. Father, honor your covenant with the Jewish people. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's take a short break. When we come back, Quebec passes a law requiring transparency. Giving you a megaphone in Washington, D.C. Dr. Chaps will be right back. Let's take a stand with Israel today. Would you sign a petition with me? Visit our website, PrayInJesusName.org. Again, that's PrayInJesusName.org and sign a petition to defend Israel, who is America's closest ally, certainly in the Middle East, if not in the entire world. We remember watching Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu give that speech at the UN when he warned about the making of an Islamic nuclear bomb, and that is being forged in Iran. But what are we doing now? The USA is negotiating with the Europeans to allow Iran to continue to develop nuclear material. Well, that's not right. Do we really trust this man, Hassan Rouhani, the president of Iran, who is the former nuclear weapons chief? You don't think they're gonna build a nuclear bomb when his predecessor, Mahmoud Ahmadinejad, literally threatened to wipe Israel off the map of history. Now, we need to take a stand. Why is American foreign policy to fund the Muslim Brotherhood? Let's sign a petition to stop that. 
Stop sending our taxpayer dollars to fund the Muslim Brotherhood. And let's also sign a petition to protect the Jewish homeland. Both of those are available today at our website, PrayInJesusName.org. And when you sign those petitions, we will fax them to Congress. Instead, the failed foreign policy of the Obama administration, starting with Hillary Clinton and now John Kerry, is pressuring Israel to give up Jerusalem? Why? We should never divide the eternal capital of Israel, which is Jerusalem, and we should move the American embassy there. But instead, now the Obama administration is unfreezing the Iranian bank accounts, sending $7 billion to them on the hope of empty promises that maybe they'll stop their nuclear program. Let's defend Israel. The Jewish people are our friends. They have a right to security in their homeland. Visit PrayInJesusName.org. Again, that's PrayInJesusName.org and sign that petition right now. He is the intersection of church and state. Here is Dr. Chaps. Our next story comes from Fox News and Associated Press who report that Quebec, the province in Canada, has passed a religious neutrality law requiring citizens to uncover their faces when using government services. Lawmakers in the Canadian province of Quebec adopted a religious neutrality law last Wednesday that would require that if a Muslim woman, in this case, happens to be riding the bus, she can't be wearing a burqa or hiding her face from the public. Critics say this unfairly targets Muslim women, but the law, which is said to be the first of its kind in North America, does specifically call for a ban on any face covering for people giving or receiving services from the state. And it also proposes guidelines on how authorities should go about making accommodations based on religious beliefs. The Quebec National Assembly passed Bill Number 62 in a vote of 66 to 51. And under this law, Muslim women in the province will have to remove their face coverings when riding buses or subways or borrowing a book from the library. This according to the Globe and Mail. But here's a quote from Justice Minister Stephanie Valley. She said, quote, to take public transport, you have to have your face uncovered all through the ride, end quote. The two main opposition parties in Quebec oppose the bill, arguing it doesn't go far enough to restrict noticeable symbols of all religions in the public sphere. Similar bills have been passed around the globe in an attempt to push for religious neutrality in public places. In September, for example, Austria became the fifth European nation to ban face veils, according to USA Today. The Anti-Face Veiling Act also includes a ban on scarves, masks, and clown paint that covers faces in public places or buildings. The Quebec bill does not specifically say which articles of clothing will be banned, but pushback from Muslim rights groups suggests the bill is likely to be challenged in court. And that's the news. Our thanks to Associated Press and Fox News for that report. Let's take a moment and discern the spirits. There is a spirit of slavery that is within people who strictly follow the teachings of the false prophet Muhammad and his false book, the Quran. And that spirit of slavery makes women into property. Not only can every Muslim man marry up to four women, but he can beat them if they don't wear a veil outside of the house. I mean, it's very clear in the Quran, you're allowed to beat your wife if she goes outside with her face uncovered. So that's just inside of their religious practice. Forget about what the government of Quebec decides to do. What I think this law in Quebec is actually intending to do is to liberate those women and give them an excuse, at least when they come home to their husbands, say, don't beat me, please don't beat me because the government said I have to take off the veil when I'm riding the bus. That liberates these women from the oppression of their false religion. And, and it, it's actually the government protecting their right to uncover their face in public. In fact, insisting on freedom for women this is not an anti-Muslim woman. This is a pro-woman law. And thank God, I discern the spirit of God on the people in Quebec in the government 
who are liberating these women from the oppression of their abusive husbands. The Bible says this in 1 Corinthians 11, and let's compare that now to the Bible. The Bible does talk about covering your head, but only during prayer, <laughs> not when you're riding the bus. Thank God, the Bible says, but everyone who, who prays or prophesies with their head uncovered dishonors her head, for it is the same as if her head were shaven. And then it compares about a woman's long hair being her glory and things like that. What I'm saying is the Bible encourages people to wear a veil, that's fine, but only during prayer. And thank God the Bible in the Christian faith doesn't encourage men to beat women when they don't do that. Let's pray about this, would you pray with me? Father in heaven, we pray for true religious liberty, that if they want to wear their veil during prayer, by all means, they should be able to honor even their false God, Allah, or the true God, Yehovah, through Jesus Christ, Father, we pray that in the spirit of religious freedom, there will not be slavery and abuse of women anywhere in North America or anywhere in the world. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's take another short break. When we come back, the Kurds want the Iraqi Christians to fight for their own freedom. This is PIJN News, defending your religious freedom. Dr. Chaps will be right back. Take action today. Dr. Chaps needs you to sign an important online petition. Today, I wanna to invite you to sign a critical petition to defend innocent babies and to end abortion in America. On this show, we like to pray and petition God, but we also need you to take action today by petitioning Congress to stop the taxpayer-funded child killing, especially by defunding Planned Parenthood, America's number one abortion provider. Why are your taxes paying to murder innocent children in the womb? Well, if Congress would simply define personhood as life beginning at conception, we can reverse Roe versus Wade. Please join me today by signing this important petition to Congress. Visit PrayInJesusName.org. Again, that's PrayInJesusName.org and sign your petition today. Sign today's petition right now. Again, visit PrayInJesusName.org to sign our petition right now. Take action today. Dr. Chaps needs you to sign an important online petition. Today I wanna to invite you to sign an important petition to Congress to protect military chaplains, especially their right to pray publicly in Jesus' name. If you remember my story, you know that I was vindicated by Congress in 2006 after I took a principled stand for the right to pray in Jesus' name. I even demanded my own misdemeanor court-martial and finally, Congress agreed with me and reversed the bad Navy policy. But Congress never did pass a positive law to let chaplains pray according to their conscience. Let's take action today for religious freedom. Would you sign that petition with me? Visit PrayInJesusName.org. Again, that's PrayInJesusName.org. Please visit PrayInJesusName.org and sign today's petition right now. Again, visit PrayInJesusName.org to sign our petition right now. Defending your religious freedom, here is Dr. Chaps. Welcome back, God bless you in Jesus' name. Our last story today also comes from Fox. Reports that Kurds in Northern Iraq, the secularists who are fighting against Muslim extremists like ISIS, they are now calling upon Iraq's Christians to stand with them in solidarity and fight for independence against the Islamic State. Kurds in Iraq voted overwhelmingly last week in favor of seeking full independence from the central government of Iraq and Baghdad, which by the way is setting off a firestorm in international retaliation including strong objections from the United States. But the secularist or Kurdish quest for their own country has also prodded other minorities in the region, namely the long persecuted Christian community to vocalize their fears and frustra frustrations about being caught in the middle of a potential civil war. And by the way, the Christians are voicing their own ambition for independence in some form of safe haven or autonomy, where they're not being wiped out by Muslim extremists with machine guns. 
Mark Arabo, president of the Minority Humanitarian Foundation, told Fox News, quote, Christians understand the sentiment of self-determination and liberty that drives every man or woman. One thing that gives Christians hope is that if Kurdistan is successful in their effort to attain sovereignty, perhaps Christians can successfully carve out a space in the Nineveh Plains that would grant them far greater protection than is currently had, end quote. By the way, there are an estimated 200,000 Christians still in Iraq today, many of them in hiding, which is way down from what used to be 1.5 million Christians in Iraq prior to the 2003 Iraq war. The majority of those Christians were forced to flee Mosul and other parts of the Nineveh Plains, and they fled to the Kurdish held north in 2014. As ISIS was assaulting the Christians, those Christians fled for the protection of the secularist or Kurdish people. Juliana Tamarazi, founder of the Iraqi Christian Relief Council, stressed that in the wake of the genocide committed against them by ISIS, the only people they can trust, sadly, are their own people. She said, quote, when ISIS attacked the Nineveh plain and the Kurdish Peshmerga, the army, and the Iraqi forces escaped instead of defending the towns they were assigned to protect, they left the Christians and the Yazidis, another religious group, highly vulnerable. What will keep the indigenous people of the land safe is, and thriving is to give them the right to defend themselves and protect themselves. That is the only way we will thrive as a society and ensure safety, and that is by protecting ourselves." End quote. And that's the news. Our thanks to Fox for that report. You know, there is, let's discern the spirits here for a moment. There is a spirit of antichrist that is loose in the world. And the Bible talks about it, especially in the book of Revelation. This is a sign of the end of the times when Christians are openly beheaded in the streets. And how many times have we seen that even on television as ISIS brags about beheading Christians. The genocide that happened in Mosul in the past couple of years and you know, honestly, genocides dating back to Turkey and, and how many countless Christians or Jews have been persecuted throughout world history. There is some kind of demonic force behind those who would slaughter us on account of our Judeo-Christian beliefs. And we need to stand against that demonic force, not just with armies. I mean, thank God that America tries to fight for religious freedom over there. And even the Kurds, and especially the Christians in Israel. But we need to fight spiritually. We need to do that through prayer. Uh, here is a scripture I'm gonna to read to you from Matthew 25. Jesus says, he who had five talents brought five talents and said, Lord, you've given me five talents. I have five more beside them. Lord said, well done, good and faithful servant. You were faithful over a few things. I will make you ruler over many things enter into the joy of the Lord. This is a prophetic promise to the people who are faithful at governing their own territory and protecting their own loved ones. Let's pray, would you pray with me? Father in heaven, we pray there will be a day when these persecuted minorities enter into the joy of the Lord and that they are rewarded for, for their faithfulness over a small territory, that you will give them liberty and spiritual victory to govern themselves and to be free. Not just in heaven, Father, what we pray this happens on, on this earth. Father, we pray for the persecuted Christians in the Middle East, in Jesus' name, amen. Let's take a short break and I'll have a word to conclude the show. Dr. Chaps will be right back with more PIJN News. Did you know religious freedom is under fire in our military today? Our troops do not have protection. For example, military chapels are now being desecrated by homosexual wedding ceremonies on bases in all 50 states. Our troops are now also faced punishment if they dare to object 
to sharing common sleeping quarters or common shower facilities, or if chaplains dare to quote the Bible during private counseling that declares that homosexuality is a sin. Nobody in our military should be forced to violate their Christian conscience, especially their right to pray publicly in Jesus' name. Let's take action today for religious freedom. Would you sign a petition with me? Visit PrayInJesusName.org. Again, that's PrayInJesusName.org. Let's defend religious freedom for our troops. Take action today. Dr. Chaps needs you to sign today's petition right now. Again, visit PrayInJesusName.org to sign our petition right now. Do you care about defending the Second Amendment? Are the Democrats trying to seize your guns? Democrat Senator Dianne Feinstein actually believes that stickers on windows and gun-free zones are gonna make your life safer? That's really not true. Uh, we also know that Congresswoman Dianne DeGette has confused magazines with bullets and is trying to ban both of those with these stricter gun control laws. But the Colorado sheriffs believe this is unconstitutional. And, and not only that, it's unsafe. A recent Harvard study shows that more guns actually results in less murders and less violence. And look what happened in England. Violence there soared after they banned guns, but here in America, violence dropped by 30% with more gun buying. Why, why is the government the only ones allowed to have billions of rounds of ammunition? I think we should defend your constitutional rights. Sign a petition today at PrayInJesusName.org. Again, that's PrayInJesusName.org. Stay tuned for the end of our show to learn how to partner with this ministry. Here's Dr. Chaps. Thank you for watching and donating when you visit PrayInJesusName.org. The Bible says in Malachi chapter three, bring all the tithes into the storehouse so there will be food in my house and try me now in this, says the Lord of hosts. If I will not open for you the window of heaven and pour out for you such a blessing that there will not be enough room to receive it. Thank you for your donations at PrayInJesusName.org. If you need prayer, call us right now at 866-Obey-God. We'll see you next time. Today I wanna to invite you to sign an important petition to Congress to protect military chaplains, especially their right to pray publicly in Jesus' name. If you remember my story, you know that I was vindicated by Congress in 2006 after I took a principled stand for the right to pray in Jesus' name. But Congress never did pass a positive law to let chaplains pray according to their conscience. Would you sign that petition with me? Let's take action today. Dr. Chaps needs your financial support to stay on the air. Would you please send your best donation today? Please visit PrayInJesusName.org to donate online. Or you can mail a check to Pray In Jesus Name Ministries, Post Office Box 77077, Colorado Springs, Colorado 80970. You can also call us toll free right now at 866-Obey-God. That's 866-O-B-E-Y-G-O-D. Please sign up for our free emails at PrayInJesusName.org. Again, that's PrayInJesusName.org. 